Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about the time I tried to become a lesbian. And some of you know, uh, those of you who have been listening to my channel for a while can probably gather that in my life I've really not done very well with with men. I've had bad luck or I've made silly choices for sure. A lot of it had to do with the choices I've made. Um, insecurities, you know, for whatever reason, I've just never really had very, um, I've never been very fortunate with the men I've dated and, you know, married. And I had, I've had really, in my whole life, I've had one real boyfriend. Um, but, um, and that one, you know, lasted less than a year. So that was probably it. In hindsight, my most successful relationship was that eight month where you really got in more in depth as far as you know the connection and the ex and you could just talk to, to the person about anything and you know so that was whatever it ended as well we, we weren't I guess we weren't really meant for each other even though we we did have a very strong connection for a while there and but, um, so, um, so there was a time where I had gotten very, just bitter. You know, I guess I'm always a little bit bitter. I've never not been bitter after a certain age. And, you know, I was extremely, I was euphoric when I met my husband and we got married and I was living the fantasy for a little while, but, you know, then it turned out all to be nothing like what I believed, you know, it was all, um, it was, that was all really a smoke and mirrors relationship. That's the more I are, the more removed I am from my marriage. It's been several years now that we've not been together. The more I realized that I was completely clueless as to who I was married to. He was not the person. And I've heard that before from other people you know when you get when you're too crazy in love when you get married it's a bad sign unfortunately I, I I hate to burst any bubbles out there but if you're crazy head over heels with someone don't marry them you know <laughs> that would be my you know from my experience you're better off liking the person feeling attracted to them but being more you know with your feet planted firmly on the earth like how what are we gonna live off of is he responsible as far as financially, does he does he look like he's, you know, finances have a lot to do with marriage. Believe it or not, I. Um, most of you will probably know that, but uh, you can't live on love. All that stuff when you're young that they tell you, oh, you can live on love. It doesn't matter. It does matter. It doesn't matter if you're not a billionaire or a millionaire even. But you both have to be on the same page as far as how to manage finances. You've got to pay bills. You've got to be able to, to you know, pay a mortgage or even a rent. And, you, and you've got to have clear who's going to be paying for what once you're married. Is it going to be a team effort? You're both going to pay half. Is it going to be, uh, you know, well, one of you stays home and works and the other, uh, <laughs> one of you stays home and does the housework and the, chores and the other one works, you know, but you've, it doesn't matter who does what, but you've got to have that all clear before you go into it. How you're going to raise kids, you know, what, what are your moral, your moral and ethical values as far as, do you feel kids should sort of be free and make their own mistakes? Or do you feel that you should both be a, a team and, and use, you know, like punishing and time out and you know, you just have to agree on those things. And it doesn't even matter if you're not 100% in agreement. You could be a little bit different, but, you know, because obviously if you have two parents that are extremely strict or two parents that are extremely lenient, that might not be a good match either because you maybe sometimes you need the balance. But you have to make sure that the person you're with is a good balance and, and that you both want the same things and your goals in life. I mean, so many things. What are, you, what are your plans for old age? I mean, so many things that I now know that I didn't even think of when I was head over heels with this man. 
and I married him like oh, you know like shortly after I met him basically I mean it was I didn't even know him okay I this is I mean I I'm like jumping around through different parts of my life because when you get to be my age you have so many time so many you know um, stages in your life that you have a lot to jump back and forth to but going back to when I was in my late 20s I had you know the relationship with that boyfriend ended and then I had dated a little bit after you know other men and I just had really you know bad experiences as far as I couldn't find anyone who wanted a real relationship after that they just wanted a flings and stuff and I was just getting really bitter and depressed and and at that age I really still was hoping for the fairy tale ending where I would meet you know the perfect one and we'd get married and we'd have children and you know but um <clears throat> but I just all right had you know maybe a year or so after maybe, maybe it was two years I don't remember exactly but it was you know a while after I had broken with the guy and I'd had one bad relationship after the other and people who lied and people who said they were single when they were married and I just on and on so I and it was just now that was the 90s already mid to la, mid to late 90s mid 90s let's say so um, I don't recall if Bill Clinton was, I think Bill Clinton was in office or maybe he just finished, but, you know, it was, things were more, more to the forefront for, for, um, gays and lesbians. It was coming out more publicly, you know, people were coming out of the closet more and it was getting, it was getting there. The seventies, it was already starting and the 80s also, but by the 90s it was in full force. People were like coming out, coming out of the closet. Um, and we weren't even that well versed yet in the media of, of transgender and all these other things. But but at that time, you know, you thought, okay, there's straight people and there's gay people. Those were the only two that really were 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 really in the news. And the others were all like, oh, there's only one or two of those. They, they still weren't very... Um, very in the public eye as much there had actually been a few people who had changed had sex changes but you know some uh, one or two famous people but still it was not as much in the news as it is today even but the gay was already very much in the news you know they were saying we deserve our rights and they were protesting and and i was always in favor of the gays having equal rights and etc back even in college when it was still a little bit taboo that was the 80s it was still some people like even people that i went to college with with they don't even remember but in college i was i was in favor a few of the girls in college had come out of the closet and um and i was like you know just still friends with them i was friends with them before i didn't see why i shouldn't be friends with them after um and i remember some of my friends that are still friends with me today and are in favor of gay rights today back then saying the most horrible things like that effing you know dyke it's so disgusting you know really horrible things and um you know and i would say well come on she's still the same person and you know we would have our little discussions but i just recall them being very very judgmental and very and they wouldn't admit to that today and i don't care i'm not going to th throw in their face if they've now change their mind with the more and more that we know that it's just something whatever even if you're not completely in agreement with it it's no you know it, I think consenting adults should be able to do whatever they want as long as they're not forcing other people you know or you know younger people okay there's a little bit of a you know that you have to be careful there but you know if everybody's over 21 uh, do whatever you want you know Personally, I think everyone should be more private about their sexuality in general, even if you're heterosexual. That's my personal, because I'm a little bit of a prude. I just wish everyone, you know, I don't mind holding hands in public, a little peck on the cheek, but I'm, I'm more of the type that thinks that people shouldn't be making out in public anyway, no matter what their persuasion is. But So, um... Oh, okay. Getting back, see these tangents I go on, but 
I always like to clarify in case anyone thinks. But, okay, so back in, I was in Washington, D.C., which is actually a good place to be when all these new things are coming out and protests, because that's where everyone does the protesting many times. Um, so there was a, um, you know, and I was like really depressed one day and I lived right downtown, like right in the middle, like near the, near the, the National Mall. And I thought, okay, well, there's a gay pride uh, festival down the street. And I was depressed. It was home. It was a weekend, I remember. And um, I was just kind of like laying around watching TV and and getting really depressed. And I said, all right, I, I got to get out. And there was, so down the street, there was like a gay pride festival and they had booths and you could go and get information at different booths about different things. And the village people were supposed to be playing, which I didn't end up seeing them. But they were going to be playing there on a pub, you know, on stage for free. So you could just go and watch the village people. I think they were kind of old by then because they were famous also in the 70s. When I was a little girl, they were famous. I think it was still the same guys, but it's 20 years later. So um, so I said, okay, why don't I just go on down there and, you know, whatever. Just out of curiosity. I mean, so I went. And it was interesting. There were little booths, you know, of people with different things, like giving information about, like there were gay men in booths about HIV, you know, giving out information and and um, all these different um, organizations that were for, for gay people. Like there was a gay cruise um, tour people, you know, just, well, you know, any one of those festivals you, you and they have those booths and um, so I got to one place, and I was just kind of out of curiosity again, getting informed, looking at the pamphlets and stuff, not really talking to anyone, but just, you know, talking to the people, the booze, just to, just to really to get my mind off being depressed that I had no life and I had no love in my life. And so then I got to a booth where there was, um, I don't even remember what organization it was, but they said, we're going to be having, um, a party, a dance party at this bar, you know, in the name of the bar, on this date, you know, at this time, and, you know, you're all welcome to join. But it was a lesbian booth. It wasn't a gay, it wasn't a mixed gay party. It was going to be a lesbian dance party. So I thought to myself, well, you know, I had such horrible, I, I mean, obviously it was not a seriously thought out thing, but I said, I've had such bad luck with men. What if I'm gay and I don't know it? What if I'm one of those people that has repressed it so much that I don't even know it? You know, maybe I'm one of those people. I was just so depressed and I so much wanted to find love. So I said, maybe, maybe if I just try, you know, expose myself to the culture, maybe it'll, it'll come to the surface and maybe I will realize that I really am gay. And, um... So, I really didn't think that I was, but I just wanted to, you know, I said, if these other people are saying that they'd never thought they were, and they suddenly realized it one day, maybe it's sort of like a religious, you know, I, it reminds me of those people that never believed in God, and suddenly the, the sky opened up, and they realized that, that, that there is a God, you know, which I'm also waiting for that moment. <laughs> but anyway, so... I don't know, I somehow convinced myself that I've got to at least try, you know, because how will I know? You know, if I keep repressing, maybe I'm I'm repressing it because it was such a taboo all these years. So I'm going to go to this party and I'm going to start immersing myself in the lesbian culture and making lesbian friends. And I'm going to, you know, maybe I, maybe I will realize that that's what I've been doing wrong all this time. So, so I went to that party uh, it was the follow. I think it was a week later, you know, and I, I went in there, I put on my makeup and, you know, got my little dress on and whatever, how, how were you dressed for a party, you know, for a dance party at a bar. And I walked in there and I was like, I hope people don't start hitting on, you know, I didn't know what to expect, but yeah, the first thing I was, like, oh my God, all these lesbians are going to start hitting on me. Cause I had really, other than the girls at college that came out at college, I really hadn't been very exposed to the cult, to the, the thing. So, so I walk in there and, um, you know, it was normal. I mean, I, I, 
I actually felt comfortable because a woman alone walking into a man to a bar that's heterosexual looks kind of, you know, a little bit like you're asking. I mean, unfortunately, you know, it shouldn't be that way, but it is. A woman can't go alone to a bar if it's if there's going to be a, a, a you know in a heterosexual situation. But I walked in there and I said, well, they don't know that I'm not gay, so so they're all going to, you know, I guess we're all women, so, you know, it was kind of interesting. We, we just all were just women in there. And then, you know, I was observing and I saw, well, some women look very feminine and some look very masculine. Like, you had ones that looked like men. And then you had one that were very, very feminine with long hair. And then, you know, everything in between. I was definitely on the feminine side. You know, I had long hair and I had my... I was the only one in there with a purse. I went in and I kind of was feeling a little bit like, oh, so what do I do now? I didn't know anybody. And um, so I went to the bar, ordered a drink, just kind of looking at the women. And, you know, there were some women dancing and some... There were a girl and another girl kissing a little bit you know, too much, I thought, for my own, but, but you know, that happens everywhere, and, um, so a little, a little, cute little short girl, I remember, came up to me, hi, you know, <laughs> just like, a, she had long hair too, and, and, uh, she seemed kind of shy, so I said, oh, hi, you know, my name's this, I'm just, you know, whatever, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I did it. I was so nervous. I was like, "What do I, I hope she doesn't think I I'm going to date her." I, I mean, I was like so overly, overly. You know, I had to learn that it's not it's not that scary. But you know, since I didn't know, so she's you know we talked a little bit, and she I remember she was a a veterinarian assistant. She was a student. She was going to school to become a veterinary assistant. And I was, let's see, at that stage, I was probably like 28, 29. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Yeah, I was probably 28 or 29 because it was 95. So maybe 90, yeah, 95, 96, around there. I wasn't even 30, I, I believe. There's that darn mosquito again. So she talked to me and we looked at it and then it's you know, one point she said you want to dance I said oh okay so we went out there and you know just danced it was a fast song and we you know free free dancing there was no we didn't touch each other or anything and um you know it was cool you know just normal and everything was fine and I don't know. It was very comfortable. I will admit it was very comfortable. Nobody was hating on you like when you go to a, a men's, when you go to a heterosexual bar, if, if you're a woman or even just two women. Of course, these days, n no one hits on me either, but <laughs> very much. But back in the day when I was in my, you know, er, before I was 30, I was, you know, looking okay. I mean, I was, I was hit honorable. And, um, then I remember started talking to some other, and I was recognizing, and I s said to myself, okay, I got to see if I'm, you know, maybe, I guess I was pressuring myself to come out of the closet where I wasn't even, I wasn't even lesbian, so there was no closet to come out of, but I was like forcing myself to try to come out of the closet. It was just so, just a weird thing, but, and so I said, okay, well, I'm not really attracted to this girl other than she's just a nice girl, but I don't feel any, you know, chemistry here. So I started looking around, see if maybe somebody attracted me. And the ones that I even, like, I, I started recognizing that the ones that I, I mean, I wasn't attracted to anyone because they were all women. And as it turns out, I'm not a lesbian. But at the time, I didn't know that. So, but the ones that I would even, cons would have considered maybe dating were the ones that looked like men. So right there, I should have realized that, you know, this isn't, you know, this isn't the place for me. I'm not a lesbian. I should have, you know, the fact that I'm being, I'm attracted to the ones that looked like real men, short hair, no bust, muscles. There was one girl she looked, she was wearing, I remember the one that I thought was the only one that I really would actually date was one woman. She had short hair, muscles, no chest. It was a woman only because I knew she was a woman because... She didn't have any beard, you know, she didn't have any stubble. Men will usually have some stubble. 
Um, but she, uh, I guess she was a bodybuilder or something, but slim, she was slender. She wasn't like a, a big bodybuilder, like the kind that gets puffed out. She looked like she just, maybe it was her naturally or she did sports or something, but she was very, very, very masculine. And if it wasn't for the fact that you could tell she didn't have a five o'clock shadow, um, I might have even thought she was a man. I might have even dated her. Uh, she, I mean, I didn't even talk to that woman. But I remember out of everyone in the room, the one that most I thought was most attractive was the one in the wife beater with the, what a name, wife beater for a t-shirt. But, you know. Um, so, but I, I kind of didn't really let myself yet... I said, I got to keep trying. I've got to keep delving deeper. Maybe it's so deep that I've got to try to. But I should have known I wasn't a lesbian because also it's not like my family ever said it was a horrible thing. I was raised in a family where my mother's, my father was more like eh, to each his own, whatever, you know, I don't know, those crazy gays, you know, sort of he had that attitude, but he didn't bad mouth gays and he was never against them having equal rights. And he was sort of like, whatever, you know, <laughs> kooky guy you know <laughs> or and my mother was always oh everybody is equal and we should all have rights and and you know etc so she was very very liberal when I was young she got conservative as we got older as I got as they got older but when when I was young I remember I was a little girl I was probably six or seven and she was um, very very vocal and she had a cup of she had a couple who was gay uh, friends of her she was friends with one of the guys and he was he had a gay a man that they lived together they were like a married couple um, that was before gay marriage was was legal but but they lived together it was like you know they were a couple and um, so that was so that was that night and I I actually met a few people and got phone numbers I probably got the phone number from the girl the veterinary assistant I never saw her again after that night but um, and I met like one or two other people, exchanged some numbers like, oh yeah, this was fun. Yeah, we should, we should go out one night or like in a group, you know, there was no, and then, so, but one of those girls called me like to go, to go out and we went out together and, and it was nice, you know, nothing no romance, you know, nothing, she didn't try anything on me, and it was, again, just sort of, and then I remember I, but then, you know, she called me again after that night that we just went out as, like, a friendly going out, and we each paid our own part, and and then she called me a third time, and I thought to myself, oh, no, she probably thinks I'm gay, you know, and I, I kind of felt like, you know, I don't, I hope she's not liking me because, I mean, I was, you know, because I, I wasn't feeling it, you know. And, um, but we went out, well, that time we, no, we went out in a group. She called me again to meet in a group. So I was actually quite successful in, in the gay, you know, because then we went out with that group and another girl got my number and then she started calling me. And I, I but then I started feeling bad because I said, I mean, I didn't do anything. I didn't date anyone after all. And I didn't, you know, obviously do anything other than just go out on a friendly date. No, nothing physical happened with anyone. But I guess I started feeling a little bit like I was, what's the word? You know, because, I don't know, especially the one that called me more than one time, I started feeling, well, gosh, you know, I felt like I was being deviant, like, and I thought I should probably tell her because I don't, you know, who knows? She might think I'm leading her on or something. And so, so I remember with that one girl, I ended up coming out of the closet. <laughs> but as a, I came out of the closet as a, as a straight person, it was just, oh goodness. It was <laughs> just the backwards, it's reverse coming out of the closet if that exists. Um, so I... You know, I told her, you know what, I, I, I was curious and I went to that party because I've, been, I've had such bad luck with men and I figured maybe I could try this, this lesbian thing, but it, it's just not really, I can tell it's not working, you know, but so, so she, 
so you know that the one time we went out so she she said oh, okay I understand she was actually so nice about it she said I understand you know uh, you know you were curious you you know it was that was fine you know whatever but we stayed friends so so then she kept inviting me to parties and I think at that point it was because I looked because I looked very feminine I mean you know I and she looked feminine too but not not as feminine she had short hair and she was and I guess maybe in her circles I don't know if it's that way outside her circles but in her circle it was cool it was like you were really if you had a very feminine looking woman with you you must be really something you know I, I that's the feeling I got like she was showing me off and, and even though she knew I wasn't gay, but I looked, which I didn't mind, actually. And I actually don't mind when men used to do it, too. Like an older man would sometimes take me on a date or two. And he said, hey, you know, I, and I would tell him, you know, because it might be sometimes an old man. Back in D.C., I, I lived in an apartment complex. There were there were some older people there. And, you know, and I think some older men showed some interest in me. And I and I, I felt bad because they would pay for my meals and stuff. And and I, I ended up telling them that I wasn't, you know, interested, that I don't want them to spend money. And my dog wants to come in. Come here. Oh, where'd he go? I don't know where he went. I want so many tangents. I should just stick to one story. So that, so I get the feeling. And so, the, oh, the men, the old men would say to me, well, no, hey, it makes me look good to have this, this pretty girl on my arm and it actually did make me feel good too where I just had to look pretty that night to go out with him to make him look important and I didn't have to give him sex or anything you know and I might even get a free meal out of it which you know it wasn't something I did regularly but it did happen a few times um so so that was the feeling I was getting even though this girl was my age I was getting the feeling that she was you know, looking very desirable to the other girls, maybe it's, maybe she thought that she could, you know, take advantage that of our French, you know, our friendship. But I it really, it was all good. It wasn't anything, you know. I didn't feel bad about it, and so come on, sweet, they want to come in and out, and all right. So then, um, okay, so we went to a party one night. She took me to a party. It was all, all lesbian party. It was in Maryland, which is near DC. A part of a city in Maryland near DC. It was a nice party. They had, you know, nice hors d'oeuvres on the table, and then it was nice barbecue in the backyard. I was I wasn't a vegetarian back then. It was hot dogs and hamburgers, and and um, you know the two people having the party was a couple, a, a lesbian couple that owned the house, and they, you know, had this nice big party at their house. Well, big. Maybe there were I'd say thirty, forty women. And um, it was really fun. It was nice, we talking and chatting and eating. And I thought, yeah, this is great. <laughs> and then suddenly, <laughs> one of the hostesses announced, yeah, the stripper's here. <laughs> and I was like, what? <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> So this lady, the stripper was a, a woman stripper. She had these fake boobs, like so huge, and you know she had on these teeny little denim shorts, and she was dressed sort of like a farm, a, a farm girl, and you know a, a plaid. I remember, I remember because I was so traumatized because I, you wait till you hear what happened. So, <laughs> so <laughs> now bear in mind, I'm an in the closet heterosexual at a lesbian party. <laughs> And the only one who knew I was heterosexual was the girl that took me there. So I was like, oh, my God, what do we do? You know, I was like, I didn't really feel like watching. I mean, it's not like, you know, but so I said, I got to try to blend in. So so the girl was dressed in a she was like Daisy Duke, like Daisy from the, the Dukes of Hazard. She had on a really teeny plaid um, shirt, like buttoned down in the front. That so teeny that her and it was unbuttoned like down to just her cleavage so her and she had a push up bra so you could see the cleavage coming out through the top of the shirt and then she had on really teeny cut off shorts tight and teeny she had on boots and um 
you know, her hair was up it like in one of those bandanas, but it was long in the back and she tied it around. And then, you know, they put the music and she started doing the dancing and all the the whole, you know, everyone in the party was like watch, you know, in a circle around her watching her do the the dance. And so I stood there too. I was like, um, <laughs> you know, because I didn't want to look like, I didn't want to be like, I didn't, I wanted to blend in, you know. So, so they're all watching and, and, you know, and it was, called, I remember it was called the touch too much. Um, she came, she was sent by the touch too much agency it was the name of the, the stripper agency that sent her. I think it was an escort service too. I don't know, but ah, oh, and the reason they call it touch too much is that you were allowed to touch the person. You were allowed to touch the the dancer. Um, probably they had some rules, you know. But so, but the lesbians were being very respectful. They were touching her, but like sort of stroking her back or her hair, and then she was coming up to each of us. And she was doing like the, like we were all standing, but she would like put her, bump up, back up into us with her rear end. And, <laughs> and I was like, so it was almost my turn. And I was like, what do I do? So I just kind of like, oh no, that's okay. That's okay. I said, that's fine. I, so she skipped over me, you know, fortunately, you know, not, you know, some women were a little touchier than others, but you know, so I said, okay, I got, I got, I got past that one. <laughs> and then she's, you know, still dancing. It, it wasn't that long, but it was for a while. And then she was doing another dance and doing all this stuff and unbutton her shirt some more. She had a bra underneath with a push-up. Um, and then she started, what are you doing, Smokey? So then she started going to each of us again. And she grabbed our head and mushed it into her. She was grabbing their heads and mushing into her cleavage. And uh, I, I didn't get, get away from that one. She got to me. She grabbed my head. Before I could say anything, she smushed my face into her cleavage. And she started, like, smothering me. <laughs> and she was doing that to everyone. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> just was in there. It's like, oh my God. I was holding my breath. I said, I can't wait till this. It probably only took, you know, it was probably only like three or four seconds, but it was an eternity for me. I just, I, just, <laughs> I, I said, I'm never going to a lesbian party again. Uh, I'm just kidding. I, uh, but I, I, that's when I said, if, if I had any doubts before, this, this has cured me. I am not a lesbian because this is just the, the worst thing that's ever happened to me. I mean, not the worst, but I am kind of exaggerating now. But it was so uncomfortable for me. I said, I'm not a lesbian. I just, and I, so finally, you know, got out of that. You know, she, it was probably five seconds at most. It was probably less, but... And I, so I get out of there, you know, and um, look over at my friend and she was just laughing so hard. She was, I, I wanted to strangle her. She was just cracking up like so hard. <laughs> I just, I was, I am going to get back at you, I said. And then, okay, so the girl, so she finished her dance and then... Another thing that I thought was really nice that I, you know, so I am glad in, in part that I exposed myself to that world, in quotes, because there was like, um, I guess it's interesting, the dynamics between lesbians. And I guess I've been in gay parties, too, uh, at, where I've had male gay friends. And there, it's sort of like, in a, at a lesbian party, the femininity is doubled it's like whatever is feminine is like respecting each other for being women it's like doubled because everybody's a woman it's like much more so so when the party and it was this was interesting because after the dance was over um then the girl that danced was talking to us you know like she was hanging out hey wow come out come out back have a beer have a hamburger with us you know and 
and they just like invited her to be part of the party and I don't think she was a gay woman I think she was a a stripper who strips for whoever hires her so if it happens to be a lesbian party she'll strip at a lesbian party if it's a ma bachelor party she strip you know but I think the girl herself the dancer was not gay either I think she was a straight uh, girl from what I could gather and um so they were talking and she, you know she was she was kind of being flirtatious but it was all toned down you know and the girls were respectful and and then they even said, oh, I hope we didn't touch you too much, like making a joke because the name of the touch to the agency was touch too much agency. So, oh, I hope we didn't touch you too much. And she said, oh, my gosh, you didn't touch you guys didn't even touch me at all. You you don't know what it's like at the bachelor parties, you know, ha ha ha. And so apparently we were very mild compared to, to the other parties she's been to. But. And it was all just really nice. And then she was telling us how she had just ha had her breast implants a few weeks ago. And, you know, it was just uh, interesting. But so she left. And actually, after that party, I sort of the girl that kind of hung out with me for the month or two that I was in the circles started dating someone else. I mean, dating. I don't we weren't ever dating, but. She was starting to see someone more regularly, so she started calling me less. You know, she told me how she'd met someone and how happy she was, and I was happy for her. And I don't even remember her name. And we lost touch after that, you know, slowly, you know, lost touch. And, and um, you know, it was just a little phase in my life that I went through, like a two-month phase, I guess. And then shortly after that, it must have been 96 or so. And shortly after that, I left D.C. anyway. So, you know, and I, I don't even remember her name, you know, because she had a nickname. Her nickname was Billy Bob. And I don't even remember her real name. But one interesting thing she told me also was that her brother, all, her brother had died of AIDS and her brother was gay, had been gay. And she was lesbian. So that's where I thought, you know, it could be something genetic, you know, who knows? I mean, not that it matters, but, you know, it was just interesting that she was born a lesbian. And actually, didn't that also happen with Cher's kids? The the son, Elijah Blue, I think his name is, Greg Allman's son, is um, gay. And her daughter, Chastity, who then became um, Chaz, it was, I don't know, I guess lesbian at first and then became trans, is a transgender male now. So I wonder if maybe it is genetic. I mean, they, they've probably done studies on that. So so that's my story. My dog probably wants to, he's a little restless. I'm going to take them for a walk now. Okay, honey. All right, I'll take them for a walk. Bye. Thanks for listening. Uh, talk to you later.